the file menu gives you access to the publish queue. When media is sent to the publish queue, it will show up in this requester. Now once in the queue, the user can choose to upload and comment on media. Media can also be duplicated here and sent to multiple destinations. Close the panel using this button. Publish Destinations allows you to choose where media types will be uploaded to as a default and they can be set to auto upload from here once they are added to the queue. Share Media Drives on Network allows users external to the 3Play system to add content to media drives across the network during a session. Now one caveat here is that if the drive you are trying to copy files to is already recording two streams and playing media back, it may cause performance issues during the copy. Only copy clips to media drives across the network if they are not currently recording and playing back multiple clips. Eject Drives allows the user to eject media drives during a session. An exit will take the user back to the sessions page. Now let's look at the options menu. The one button marking option defines how many seconds to jump back from a selected out point to create an in point. If you set it to four seconds and hit the mark out button, it will create an event and it will jump back four seconds in time from the marked out point. This is perfect for sports that do not have clearly defined start and stop points to the action like basketball or soccer. The jump back time can be set between 3 and 15 seconds. Keep it set to the default of 4 seconds for now. Still image duration sets the default duration for a still added to a clip list via the add media button. Options here include 1 frame, 1 second, 5 seconds, and 10 seconds. The out point padding determines how far past the selected out point a clip will continue to play for. When set to 5 seconds, it will continue to play for 5 seconds beyond the marked out point. Set this to infinite so that the replay clip never stops until you manually stop it. During a replay, it can be useful to see all of the camera angles of an event as it plays back. Show Clip List Angle Previews will put monitors for each angle of a clip being played back onto the main UI. When using AV pass-through, camera 8 will become the active camera that passes through in the event of a catastrophic software failure. When in the 4 camera redundant mode, you don't have access to the controls for input 8, so making adjustments on that input becomes an issue. When AV pass-through is on, you can use the fail-safe camera configuration option here to adjust input 8 when in the 4 camera mode. Next is the Help menu, which will display a QR code. This QR code, when scanned by any smart device, will display the manual for the system. This area shows the session name and resolution. This is also where messages are displayed by the 3Play. An example of a message is when you hit the Alt and the B key on the keyboard, it will display the build number here. This can be handy if you need to call for support. To remove the message, click on the green box. Next we have Drive Info, and Drive Info shows how much time you have left on the drive with the least amount of recording space, basically telling you how long you can record all of your configured channels at the same time. Now, if you have a drive in a bay and it is not configured to be used in the recording, it will not be taken into account in this number. The grab function shown here can grab images from the main outputs and all of the inputs at the same time. To configure the grab function, you click on the gear. You can set it up to de-interlace images when grabbed. This removes the motion in stills grabbed from interlaced video streams. This is not needed when working in a progressive session. All stills are grabbed as JPEG images. The record button on the interface can start and stop the recording function by clicking on it. 
Here you will find the production clocks. To configure them, click on the gear. This is the time that will be stamped on to the recordings that you make. If no external time code is used, then the time of day is used. Make sure to set the Windows clock to be accurate so that the time code is also accurate. You can also use external time code. LTC time code can be brought into Audio Input 7. The video connection type pull-down is disabled for input 7 when it is used for time code. When external time code is in use, the time code display turns light blue as a visual cue. You can also set up a second production countdown clock. When configured with a start and a stop time of the production, a second time display will appear. If the production is not started yet, this is a countdown to the start of the production. If the production has already begun, it is a countdown to the end of the production. Here in the multiviewer area, you can see all of your incoming video signals. When you mouse over an input monitor, a gear appears. Clicking on the gear will open the input monitor's configuration panel. Use the pull down here to choose the format and resolution of the video coming in for that input. Each input can have a different format and resolution. You can name the input here to be something more intuitive for the event that you are recording. Each input has a processing amplifier or proc amp. The proc amp controls and white balance controls are found here. Although these are nice for tweaking video signals, this does not mean that you should not send the 3Play the best possible video signal. Always white balance the camera and only use these internal controls as slight tweaks, not main controls. You have the ability to configure the type of audio used for this input here, including analog, digital AES-EBU, or embedded SDI audio from any input. This means the audio from input 1 can go to all inputs. There is also a gain control here for adjusting the volume of an analog audio source. The 3Play 4800 features two independent outputs that can be configured separately. At the bottom of each output monitor, there is a heads-up display, or HUD, showing the current state of that output. The current mode can also affect what is displayed on the HUD. In the clip list mode, it shows the output's name, a countdown clock of the duration of the clip playing that it has left to play, the time code of the clip itself, the event ID and camera angle, the name of the clip, and playback speed percentage. The HUD also highlights in a color when the output is selected in a specific mode. Blue when it's in the clip list mode, yellow when it's in the playlist mode, and green when you're in the live mode. These colors are also shown on the T-bar of the control surface as a visual cue to the state of the system. The HUD display also shows which output is currently selected on the CS by a white outline around the HUD display when both outputs are linked using the link button shown here. Mousing over either output makes a gear appear. Click on the gear for output A to open the configuration panel. You will see several tabs along the top of the panel. The first two are labeled output A and output B. Both outputs can be configured from one output configuration tab. The outputs can be renamed here. Often, outputs are named to match the corresponding inputs on a switcher during a live production. The output resolution for all three outputs always matches the session resolution. The analog output type is ghosted and displays component in a high definition session as this is the only high definition capable format we have for analog. If the session is set to standard definition, then this pop-up is active and can be selected between component, which uses all three connectors, or composite and YC, 
which use one and two connectors respectively. The analog and SDI outputs are both active on each output row simultaneously. It's really like six video outputs in three rows. The audio volume control allows you to adjust the raw audio level coming from just that output. Remember, audio and video connectors for A are labeled 1 and B are labeled 2. Output C, labeled 3, is the aux output and is a switched output, which means whatever output is currently selected on the control surface is what is coming out of that output. Also from this panel, you have options for the aux output or output 3 and the secondary multiviewer. This is the DVI connector labeled MultiView on the back panel. Now your options for the layouts include outputs, inputs and clocks, outputs and clocks, inputs, outputs and clip list playback, output A or output B. You can also adjust the resolution for the secondary monitor here, allowing you to use almost any monitor as the secondary multiviewer. By making the multiviewer into output A or B, you create a DVI version of that output. This should only be used by the operator and should not be used as an output visible to the viewers, as it is a preview and is of lower quality than an actual output. The GenLock feature in 3Play allows you to sync or lock your video output to a blackburst or house sync signal. The GenLock tab allows you to use either bi-level for standard definition or tri-level for high definition GenLock. The positioner tools and the phase tool are available for adjusting the GenLock signal for perfect sync. The center frequency control is used when GenLock is not being used. You can input color bars and pass them through an output and then take that signal to an external vector scope. When the vector scope image is completely stable, the center frequency is set correctly. Failsafe is a feature to ensure you always have video passing through the system, if at all possible. There is a button to enable or disable this feature. Some broadcast systems have their own failsafe systems that detect when video is no longer being supplied, and then their failsafe system kicks in. If this feature is on in the 3Play, then video is always passing through and the external failsafe system will never kick in. Only turn this feature on if you don't have an external failsafe system in place, and by default, AV pass-through is off. There is a record button on the interface and on the CS. This can start and stop the recording process. All files are recorded as QuickTime files. You must be recording for the 3Play to function as a replay system. You can start the recording by pressing this button on the interface or the record button on the control surface. Once you start recording, every frame of every input will be recorded regardless of you setting in and out points. You can even go back after an event has passed or after the game is completely over and create new events. As long as you are recording before the game starts and don't stop until after the game is over, you will have all video from every angle available. If for some reason you forget to start the recording process, as soon as you hit an endpoint, the recording process starts automatically for you and you can see this on the interface and on the CS by an illuminated record button. To stop the recording process, you can click on the record button in the interface. On the CS, you must use the shift button along with the record button to stop the recording process.